I think writing, the impulse to write comes out of a, a failure to communicate by any other means. I think most natural writers are socially incompetent. And I, I would include myself generously in that category, especially uh, as a child and in my early adulthood. And, and, and yeah, I, I often is not at parties, for example, I still feel like a 13-year-old fish out of water would prefer to crawl off in a corner with a book. Um, when you, when uh, talking only works so well and you know that feeling of of having uh, had an encounter with someone and later you think what you should have said. Well writing is all about being able to rewrite history and get at what you should have said. It's a it, it's a way and it's a way of writing subtext you know that's the thing is that it, with s social interaction. It's always got more than one layer, and that's very frustrating. And uh, with people uh, with whom we're trying to be intimate, we're always fighting to get down to the layers. And it seems that no matter how many layers you go down, there's another one that you haven't really tapped. And writing is, is, is an effort, and sometimes a failed effort as well, um, to get down to the bottom layer. I'm a big fan of Edith Wharton. Um, I love the way she writes elegantly uh, without, uh, without being fussy. Uh, she writes beautiful sentences. They're well constructed and balanced. But they're never just beautiful sentences. They always say something. To me, that's the essence of a beautiful sentence. It's not just um, pretty in its language, but it gets at something, some kind of truth or, or essence that is revelatory. And she, she embodies that for me. She's also a great storyteller uh, and, and writes wonderful characters. Um, I'm also a huge fan of Richard Yates. I feel I have a real affinity with his perspective on the world, which is a little bit sour, but also, um, also ha has a a sense of humor. And I, I love the way he writes characters that is it, uh, on, on the one hand, in a lot of ways he's taking the mickey out of them, as they'd say in Britain. <laughs> that is, he's, he's exposing them. But he's exposing them in a way that is short of ridicule. Yeats still has a tenderness toward his characters, even characters that are um, that are being used a bit for laughs, or you know, maybe maybe shallow or pretentious. But there's always something poignant about that, and sympathetic. And I like that. I'm not sure I always manage to pull that off into my own work, but when I do, I feel I've really achieved something because, as much as it's uh, satisfying to expose people's foibles, it's it's. It's most satisfying to do that in a way that, that is empathetic with those foibles, which sees them from the inside and, and how they might have come about, and, and has an element of forgiveness in the portrait. There's nothing occult about what I do. It is very ordinary. I'm often asked at literary festivals, for example, you know, how many hours a day do you write, and when do you write, and do you have a set number of pages that you write? And the answer is, you know, it varies enormously. I used to be much more insecure about my capacity to generate a manuscript, and so that when I first started out, and I'm sure a lot of younger writers will recognize this, you know, I, I, I started at a particular time. I had to write three pages a day. Uh, now I'm not like that at all. Maybe, maybe someday I'll write nothing. Some an, another day, maybe I'll write ten pages. Uh, the secret is just to keep at it um, and and put in the time. And it doesn't matter what what the time of day is. It's a very workaday plodding profession, especially writing books. Uh, you're better off not waiting for inspiration. I find 
uh, inspiration uh, is something that you demand of yourself that that will arrive in due course if you sit in front of the computer long enough. You just have to concentrate. Um, so, you know, I get up in the morning, have a, a whacking big cup of coffee, uh, read the newspaper. I have to say that's an important part of my life is, is uh, keeping up with current events. I'm especially attentive to the little articles. I think for a writer, those little sidebar art articles are, are the jewels of the news day. Um, tiny little incidents uh, that, that are usually on a more individual level and not like peace talks in the Middle East. And I love those. And I, I'm somebody who um, fanatically clips those articles. I've got whole files full of uh, bits and pieces from the newspaper. And then I answer my email, which takes an atrocious amount of time. And finally, I get down to work. Uh, I guess the, on an advice level, the only, other, uh, the only other advice I dish out is that the one kind of counterpoint important part of my day is getting a, getting a lot of exercise at the end of it, because it's such a sedentary profession that uh, that otherwise it's enervating. When you get enough exercise, it keeps your energy levels up. So anybody who out, out there who, who writes should also learn to run. Occasionally. I don't use them as much as I, 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 I think I will or I should. Um, I think they more function along the lines of um, giving me a sense of narrative possibility. Uh, all the weird little plots. I mean, reality is so much stranger than you could ever make up, and I like to be reminded of that. Mm -hmm.